Welcome to Knowledge at Wharton for this interview with Harish Hemage, and he is a principal in the Chicago office of the Boston Consulting Group. And we're going to talk about a challenge that a lot of big companies face in an age of global advertising and global marketing. And that is, uh, if you're a big company operating across 50 or 100 or more countries, and perhaps dealing with a thousand or more outside agencies. How do you harmonize all that? How do you make sure that you're getting the most efficiencies out of your spend and also uh, in getting the clearest message across to your uh, customers? So, Harish, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank uh, you. And um, starting from that context, anytime a company uh, works with hundreds of suppliers or even thousands of suppliers, uh, it's inevitable, I would think, that some inefficiencies are going to creep into the supply chain. So in yeah, a way, there's no, no reason that marketing or advertising would be different. It, uh, it's just a service rather than ordering parts for widgets. Uh, <laughs> so could you give me an idea? I know you've looked at this problem closely and worked with companies. Uh, give us a, a, an overview of what the problem is and, and, and ways to think about uh, improving the situation. Yeah, absolutely. So this has certainly been a topic top of mind for a lot of senior executives across, especially the consumer products areas, but also other industries as well. But within consumer products themselves, the challenge has become that the marketing budgets themselves have become you know, upwards of 10% of revenues for a lot of big companies. So you're talking billions of dollars of spend. And within that, more and more in the analyst calls, investors are actually pushing to make sure that companies are getting value for that scale. But the challenge comes in that with that scale comes complexity and lack of transparency in terms of what's actually going on. Because you're going from an environment where you had you know, single market, single brand kind of businesses to 50 plus global markets managing multi-brand portfolios. So the ability for you to be able to actually manage that as a CMO is really, really challenging. And the procurement function is in the role to be able to help them actually manage some of that spend. And so the companies that we've worked with, you know, we've worked with many, many lar of the largest consumer products companies in the world, you know, over $50 billion in size. And some of the key themes that we've heard that you know, people are under more pressure to be able to deliver value and to show that they're improving. And some of the biggest sources of inefficiency that we've seen are around really three areas. So you talk about the agency proliferation, the number of agencies that they're working with and the rapid expansion of that. So being able to help manage some of that. The second is getting an understanding of what value they're getting for what they're spending with those agencies. So are they actually getting market competitive rates? Are they actually getting you know, the right service levels that they need to be able to deliver the highest quality product? And finally, and actually the most valuable but most challenging is the fundamental approach to brand building. So we call it ways of working. And what, is, what are the actual approaches in terms of the efficiencies and ways in which the marketers operate to be able to actually root out the core inefficiencies. Could you give us an example of what this looks like on the ground in real life, uh, the kind of problems that a company's facing? Yeah, absolutely. So one simple example is the agency briefing process. And so you would think being able to inform a company about how they're going to do the marketing campaign, what they're looking for for, say, a TV ad. We've heard examples from people on the agency side that Sometimes they'll get a call from a marketer who's on the subway for a million dollar ad campaign, giving them the brief. And you know it generates a week's worth of work, and then they come back, and then they realize, oh, that's not exactly what I was looking for. So lack of clarity not only increases cost for the agency, but it also increases frustration for your ability to actually get the best talent from the agency itself. And so you found that within different agency teams, or within the different brand teams within it, for the consumer product side that companies sometimes don't actually have consistency in terms of how they're actually briefing the agencies. So by being able to have greater consistency in terms of how you actually brief the agency, so what information are you trying to capture, what are the metrics you're going to use, being very clear around what those components are, you can actually eliminate a lot of the inefficiency and a lot of the cost. Why are companies getting questions from analysts now about this. Hasn't this always been a problem? I mean, we, we've had globalized advertising for some time. It's not brand new. Uh, they've been spending lots of money. Why, why the sudden notice for this issue? Yeah, I think the total dollars of spend has continued to increase. 
So on an absolute basis, it continues to grow. And the second piece around it is that with the proliferation and fragmentation of media has resulted in actually proliferation of the agencies that people are using. And so you know, the agency rosters have drastically expanded over the years to be able to have you know, specific types of agencies for each type of media. And as a result, you're actually getting less and less clarity in terms of who you're operating with, who you're working with, and more brand handoffs over time. And so this big bucket of spend around advertising and marketing, it's become a big deal because there's basically an arms race in consumer products companies of who can get their message more in front of the consumer than anyone else. And one of the key things, the metrics that we typically look at is around working to non-working spend. So working is the dollars of marketing that you spend that gets in front of consumers versus the non-working side, which is the money that you're spending to create those advertising. And so as a result of that, what we're seeing is that analysts and investors are becoming more attuned and more astute about those different components of it and are pressuring companies to make sure that they're actually getting their brands in front of consumers more because if you're not, your competitors are. To what extent is the digital world driving this or, or yeah. how big of a part is it if it's not driving it? Yeah, it's probably increasingly important. So for some large companies, digital can compose 20 to 25 percent of their total marketing budgets, but it's not actually the biggest driver. The biggest driver is still traditional media and traditional television. That's where the dollars are. But as digital becomes an increasingly large component of the business, those working to non-working ratios actually, for digital, typically look a little bit worse because the CPM rates are not all that high for a lot of those different online properties versus the cost it takes to actually produce the content. So it actually makes it even more important for a company to be diligent in terms of how they manage that spend so that they can actually continue to make sure that they're getting what they need. As well, within the capabilities for what they need in the agencies, initially the belief was that you had to go through these boutique agencies to be able to get those niche-specific digital capabilities. That may or may not be the case anymore. Where do you find the biggest inefficiencies? It's certainly at its core in the marketing processes of the organization. So being able to set brand strategies in a consistent way, making sure you're very diligent about who has the decision rights to do advertising copy, the briefing process, which we had talked about, and then more simply around the agency engagement process. So who can actually sign up an agency and who has the authority to be able to actually do that? So decision rights. And I'll dive in a little bit around the piece around ad copy. So one of the biggest spends is around ad production and advertising copy. So that's really what drives a lot of that. And so being able to be smart about what is the size of the business that you need? What is the size of the potential media that you're going to spend against it? And how does that inform the budget you need to have to be able to create the copy? So if you're a brand manager in a small market, you know, your incentive is to want to create the best possible ad copy. And you want to get awards for it, and you want to go to Cannes and be part of that festivity because you created the best ad, which is a great goal, but from a business standpoint, it may or may not actually make sense because the size of the market needs to dictate what the value is and how much you spend for that. And so there are times where maybe you should create new ads if you're in a major market or if it's going to be cutting across markets, versus there are times maybe they ran an ad in an adjacent country that you could potentially adapt to be able to actually apply on your own to save costs. Uh, when we talk about saving costs, how much are we talking about in potential savings. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of resetting agency negotiations and through consolidation, we've seen upwards of 10 to 20 percent of the advertising agency expense costs. Um, from the broader changing marketing ways of working, it's upwards of 20 percent of the non-working spend. So it's actually very, very material. What are the potential pitfalls? What do people have to be careful about? Uh, when they sort of lift the hood and start messing <laughs> with something that's working to some degree. But, you know, of course, you're, you're, you're saying that it can be improved quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I think when we've done this with other companies before, 
the key learning that I have had is that the key to success is actually getting senior management buy-in and being able to make it cross-functional. So the efforts where it was procurement-led, where people had the perception that there's a procurement hammer coming to try to hammer out the best rates, those are the ones that were actually the least effective. That's the traditional way people have thought about it. And we've really innovated in terms of how we have to think about that approach because by being able to make it a marketing-led effort with the engagement and support of procurement, you actually change that dynamic quite a bit. And being able to actually get the right people in the room and be able to have the people who are going to be owning the business long term, helping to drive some of those changes, those are some of the biggest value pieces that we've seen. Okay. So part of the aim is to consolidate the number of agencies you're working with, you gain efficiencies by doing that. Uh, what are the most important factors uh, for success in this consolidation process? So being able to be very clear in terms of having transparency of who you work with and getting a baseline for that first. So you'd be surprised how many companies that we've met that actually don't have visibility to how many agencies they're even working with. And so the first step is, actually getting transparency to that, creating a roster, and then from there, actually as a senior leadership team in the marketing function, being able to work with procurement and finance to understand who are actually the priority agencies we wanna work with, what are the key capabilities that we actually need going forward, and how do we actually be able to focus our efforts to be able to get those to those agencies right? And it's certainly, an emotional process because a lot of times there are specific people who may have affinity with a specific agency for a type of work. But ultimately what we found is that the places that are most effective in being able to do this actually do it in a very fact-based way and see in terms of what are the results that they need to get, what are the teams that are gonna be able to deliver that, and then being able to abstract from kind of the emotional side of it to be able to actually make sure that you're aligning people in the process to get to the results. What metrics do you find most valuable as you go through this process? Sometimes the first simple one is this working to non-working ratio. And so getting an understanding of what percent of your marketing spend is going in front of consumer advertising. So things like buying the media or if you're sponsoring sports teams and getting your brands actually in front of consumers. And we typically expect that to be about 80% of what consumer companies are spending. It varies based on the type of medias that you use, but you know that's generally a, a rough rule of thumb. And, and then the remaining 20% around the non-working side. So you've got your agency expenses and all your uh, data needs and things like that to be able to support the business. So being using that as a first cut to be able to understand are we being efficient with terms of how we're spending that money is usually the first metric that we use to be able to understand what that is. The second is a simple one of how many agencies are we actually working with and what are, what are we spending with them to be able to get an assessment of like, do we believe that this is actually the right number for our organization? Because ultimately, we will mirror our suppliers. And so if we have a highly fragmented supplier base, which is, you know, taking up a lot of our time. Our marketer is gonna be spending more time managing the suppliers than they are actually managing the brands. Which companies benefit most by looking at the non-working spend? It's really any company that has a material marketing spend. So the companies that have been really at the forefront of this are very much on the consumer product side. So they're the ones who have been really pushing it. And you can see in a lot of the investor relations and public reports, of CEOs and CFOs of big global consumer products companies talking about this, this specific issue. Um, but that being said, in the past probably six months to nine months, we've been getting more and more calls from clients in the pharmaceutical space, from financial services, from retail, as they start to think about, you know, we are really spending a lot of money in this, and the procurement functions, particularly in a place like financial services, have not historically been as robust, particularly around the A&M side. And so being able to get people to start thinking about this to get better efficiency has certainly been uh, a big opportunity in terms of for them to unlock value. Overall, what's the best way for companies 
to think about this problem and how to begin to tackle it? It's a good question. I think the playbook that I would probably think about for most companies would be around really three levers. The first is getting a very clear assessment of the agencies that you work with and what that roster looks like and making very strategic choices around who you want to work with and what that supplier profile should look like. The second is around what you're actually paying and the rates that you're getting for those agencies. So over time, the rates that you're paying across most of these agencies can actually deviate from benchmark and best in class. And so how do you actually make sure you're resetting it to get the value that you'd expect? And third, it's really the biggest value driver is by taking a very clear approach to your ways of working in marketing itself to root out the inefficiencies that drive costs. So being very disciplined in terms of creating a set of approaches on how you want to operate as a marketing organization, clear decision rights and how that operates, and being able to have a single approach to how you do brand building within an organization, which can unlock upwards of 20% of savings. Okay, thank you very much. Great, thank you.